Okay, let's go ahead and chamfer this and then we're gonna mark how long our threads are gonna be here. About 700 long. Okay, I like to figure out where my cutter's gonna go here in relationship to the starting point in here. Okay, that looks good there. Now we'll bring this over. We wipe this face off right here. We're gonna come into our part, and basically we're just, this is one of our ways that we set the compound square. Our threading tool will automatically line up there. If you were doing a high speed bit, and, and I'll get into that in another video, show you how to set those up but these are pretty well automatic because they're all set square with the holder and as long as your holder and your and your block are all lined up your uh, your inserts is like ready to go like that fast it is uh, one of the things that's real nice about it and uh, all right so I'm gonna grab another view for threading because you're, you've seen enough threads being cut here. You want to see how the handles and everything else are being done. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to thread with this in between centers. Okay, we're, uh, we're calculating and figuring out our, our threads here. Uh, understanding what we have for a thread and then setting up the machine to cut those threads. I've take, I got a thread pitch gauge here, and this is three quarter. Yeah, well, it is three quarter inch diameter, 16 threads. We verified that. Now, this is a fish tail. You see why you call it a fish tail? All right. Um, this uh, gives you several V shapes, and that is uh, uh, formed so that you can. And, and threading is done with what you call a form tool, and you'll grind. Uh, high speed uh, bits to, to to that shape and this is gauges to size and shape your bit on the nose but it's also to set up square against your shaft or the any surface I've even set up along the side of the face of the chuck and use just one side to come in and set up uh, your threading angle so you can use this in a lot of different ways and it's basically to square it. The main use that I have of the fishtail is also the increments of threads, 10, 9, all the way down here to uh, three and a half, and then from 11 on up to 28, and it gives you double the depth. Now 16 is right there, it's 81 thousandths is double depth. So we're in uh, 40 and a half thousandths per side as far as your, your single depth. Now. There is also, this is an old set of wires that I picked up back in the early 80s. And of course I, I didn't have, uh, I couldn't afford PD wires, they were a little bit more money. PD, uh, and I, I don't know if it was his first name or his last name, but he was the inventor of the three wire measuring system. And that's where the name PD wires comes from. All right, on the PD wires, you can see that inside here, they give you the size of, that's the actual diameter and decimal amount of the wires. And if uh, you're referring to that set of wires, that's a 018 size wire. That's how you would refer to it. Um, this is a thread chart here. Let's see if I can, yeah, there we go. And it gives you the threads per inch, the wire size right here. And this gives you the add and then the constant. Um, and the instructions are right in here. And they, they show you uh, the wire positions, measuring over the wires, the pitch diameter. They, you know, they give you all the terminology in here. And then the, here's the conversion chart for 60 degrees metric threads. So you can read American or metric threads with a set of wires. And that's one, this is, this is the professional way and also the, 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 the right way to gauge threads or judge threads and your fit. And it's, it's, a, it's one of the machinist tools. All right, now I'm gonna show you an example of measuring with these, but I'm also gonna show you how I go about getting an average fit on a thread because you'll see me and this is the first time you've seen me dig these out not that I don't use them and not that I don't have them but most of the time I do not use wires I have a method 
that gets me right in there and creates good fits. Usually I have the female that's going to be my test nut and I'm gauging the fit of that nut. All right, And this is a lock nut so you want it to lock but you also want a certain amount of it to be free and you want your thread to be the right size. Now I'll also go and I'll find a 3 quarter inch 16 full nut and I'm going to have that as a test feel as well. Okay, we can see over here, here's 16 over here, so we know that we need to have this pin in that slot right there. Alright, now we go straight across here, and 16 would normally be in DA, but because I'm running the 36 tooth gear, everything ships up. So I'm in CB. Alright, so CB is, is my engagement there. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're, we're going we're gonna to raise up this either engages or disengages the threading screw and I bring it on up so that we're engaging there otherwise if you're not threading there's no sense in turning it okay so we engage the threading screw now we're set and ready to go okay this this is the threading engagement and when you pull this up you pull two half shell threads around this lead screw and and then it becomes the motion of that lead screw at that speed all right and at, at that revolutions per per travel so by looking at it here you'll see that right now it's freewheeling and then when you engage it it starts to travel now the carriage is riding with that upper screw and down is disengagement and you gotta you gotta hit it in at a certain time now I'm gonna show you how you know what time to do that in and how to keep it in the same location each time after after you fed it forward you gotta bring it back to your start again okay now this is called a threading dial it's down in here and this little line up here at the very top 12 o'clock is your alignment and your other numbers here at various uh, thread increments. You can cut half threads, double threads, and, and all of that. But we're just going to get into cutting a single thread. Now we're going to be, we can engage because we're on an even number thread. It's not like uh, 11 and a half. That would be an odd thread, okay? But 11, 12, 13, all the single digits or, or single uh, non-fractional threads I can engage on any one of those numbers and it'll, and it'll repeat the same position. Okay, and I would be waiting and then I would pull up that lever right there to line up with a three. And then I'm starting my first thread cut or pass across there. And then I pull out my carriage and then I undo it and I come back to the start. And I have to wait to engage it again on one of these numbers. You, you need to continually go back in the same spot. Here comes number one, engage it and it'll hold it. Come back and be waiting for number two. And that's how you time yourself on your threads. Number two is engaged. All right, so that's your indicator. It lets you know when to engage that lever. Now, before I actually start my threads there, there's a little relief in here. Somebody put this in with the actual threading insert or threading bit and they put a triangle. I don't like doing that because that leaves a stress rise area right there. Not that it's a real problem otherwise there's no side thrust on the shaft so that's another reason why they can get away with that. But I'm going to put a slight radius in there and I'm going to use this. Now the relief only needs to be the depth of the threads. So I only need to go in about 40, I'm going to probably go 42 thousands or so in. And uh, so I'm just, I've got my mark there. I'm just going to touch it off here, all right, give a little bit of juice there. All right, I'm going to set my dial here, and I'm just going to come on in and get a slip. All right, there's 42. Now we're just going to kind of make it smooth in there, okay? Blow it out. Okay, the first thing I like to do is, is set up a, a dial indicator here, and I call this my dashboard dashboard gauge. 
Um, and it basically this really just kind of gives me an eyeball. I'm not I'm not ready to set a zero on here, but I'm getting it in position. My tool is fine here. Alright. So what I like to do is go ahead and turn it on. And I set this dial first. I set this dial oh, to zero. And I like the handle here because I'm gonna pull out at the end of my threads like that. So I got I got a comfortable feeling on that. That's what I want. You got You got The whole thing about threading is being comfortable and being able to repeat. You got to be able to bring this back to zero every time. Okay. So that dial is set. Now I need to touch off so my part or my tool bit is touching zero. So I bring this in until I just barely rub the part. All right, now if you didn't run a trans, uh, if you didn't run a dashboard gauge, which I'm going to go ahead and set this now, and uh, I like it to be up here, like about 12 o'clock right there. Okay, this on your compound would be your other gauge that you'd want to go ahead and set to zero, because you're going to want some kind of reference to how much you're feeding in. This is straight in depth, and that's what the wires are all about. That's what the double thread, it, it, everything is in relationship to straight in depth measurement. So this is a percentage of depth in, and this is like guessing. Uh, it's like somebody doing an alignment and bumping over or uh, putting a shim in there and go, hey, let's try that. That's not doing an alignment. Alignment is a math problem. And uh, it, when you can complete the math problem, you can do the alignment right on the money, all right? So anyway, back to threading. Uh, the fishtail here says that uh, 16 is 81, so we got 40 and a half thousand. So I like to take about 10,000 per pass. And uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of lube on here. And I'm gonna crank in. Actually, I'm just going to crank a thousand. It's good, good practice just to make a rub pass to make sure that your thread pitch is matching. And that's what the thread gauge is here. So I can come along and do a little scribe line right there by just letting it barely rub the, the diameter of the part. And I'll be able to hold this up there and eyeball the thread pitch. All right, so I look at my dial. And, of course, you're looking... You're looking at this dial over here, all right, and I'm going to flip this lever over here when the dial gets in the right position. So I'm going to I'm going to give you a bird's eye view of how I'm controlling it. All right, it's lined up. Here we come. It's making a light scratch pass. When I get to the relief, I pull it out and I disengage it. You want to do those both as quick as you can. The most important one is pulling out. So now we take the thread gauge and we hold it up there. And what you're looking for is to make sure that each one of your your points or your depth of your uh, your gauge is fitting right in there. And we're on the money. So we're actually cutting 16 threads per inch. All right. Now that we put a scribe across there, we can start cutting, and we know that we're cutting the right thread. Now we just got to get it down to the right depth. Okay, we're getting ready to start it, and I'm, I got you in this position here, maybe so you can see me control the, the, the handles, okay? I'm going to be staring over at that gauge, and I'm going to be setting everything up, okay? So first thing I do is I run it on. Now we want to come in to our zero. Come into our zero. Now I'm going to take it. This is where you feed it in. I'm going to take my 10. All right, now I've got my hand on the handle, and engage it. While I engage it, I usually hit a little bit of lube here <clears throat> so that it always has lube on there. Pretty important to cut with a lubricant there, a cutting oil. All right, you see I went down and I got out. Now I come back to the beginning, crank it into zero again. Take the next cut, another 10,000. We're at 20 on the depth now. We're waiting for the three to come around. 